Hey guys, welcome back to the Vice Casting Couch. Today we'll be looking at this one new super micro server um, and using it as a PFSense router. Now I found this on eBay originally and it caught my eye because it has six 10 gigabit NICs on it and a nice fast four core Xeon in there running at 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, mine came with 16 gigs of RAM, but it also has a PCIe slot and IPMI and on the front of it, it does have four hard drive slots on it. So you could use this for something besides a router and just have a lot of networking capability. Uh, but here we're gonna be running PFSense. Um, right now, we're just gonna make sure our iPerf package is installed and we're gonna do an iPerf speed test from the server to my desktop. So once it's installed, you can just go to diagnostics, click iPerf. Once in there, you'll select server and click run iPerf3 server. Now we'll switch over to our desktop command line. We'll run the iperf3 command specifying the server IP address. And initially I was a little confused. I was getting about 5.3 gigabits a second. And I was like, this is a 10 gig capable server. What's, what's up with that? So I did some searching online and I found that if you do the dash P and specify 20, you can run 20 parallel connections and actually get the throughput. So as you can see, we're getting about 9.3 gigabits a second. I figured I'd throw that in there just in case you were doing the same speed test on your equipment. It just kind of helped me out. Now I did hook up my ISP to the PFSense box, set up my WAN interface and everything, and I decided to run a speed test. And I was a little bummed out because I have this nice 10 gig capable router, but I'm only getting about a gig down and the upload from Xfinity is pretty abysmal. They run an asymmetric connection, so I'm only getting about 40 megs up and I just really wanted more. But I'm fortunate enough to live in a region that has competing ISPs and we actually have a pretty new fiber ISP here that offers 10 gig residential internet. So I scheduled it, the internet installed and they came out here and put this Nokia switch, ran the fiber into the house and I was actually able to hook up my LC fiber into the other port. Well, this server doesn't have a fiber connection, but it does have that PCIe expansion. So we're gonna install this Intel fiber NIC in here. It's pretty easy to work in this board. There's just two little buttons that you push down and then it will kind of slide the cover off. Previously, I did use the PCIe slot for a I225-V 2.5 gig Intel NIC and it did work pretty well. I was just experimenting with some different connections in there. Um, when I initially had that NIC in there, I did have to use the experimental version, but I believe with the latest version of PFSense, they have included the drivers on the stable version, so that shouldn't be a problem. Here is the fiber NIC we're using. This is an X520-SR2 dual SFP 10 gigabit NIC, and it's pretty easy to slot in there. Um, there is a little metal tab that holds the PCIe bracket firm and secure. And that kind of got in the way here, so I just had to slide that back, and then we could put the card in. Once the card's in, we'll put that little metal bracket back to hold it in safe, and then put the screw to lock that down. There is a lot of room in here. It is pretty open and easy to work on. Um, as you can see, there's also two extra SATA slots if, if you wanted to use it for something else. But we can upgrade the RAM. I did wish it had a dual power supply for redundancy, but... For the price we paid here, I'm not complaining. Now we'll just put the cover back on and it'll just snap right into place. And then we'll run our fiber connection into the new card we installed. After that, I went into PFSense and reassigned my WAN interface and made sure everything was good to go. I figured let's run a speed test. Um, this is running in Firefox and I was a little bummed out. I was only getting about 2200 megabits down and about the same for the upload. And I was thinking, I was like, well, I know Firefox is a little slower in some instances, so let's try a Chromium based browser. So here I'm using Brave, doing the same speed test on the same server, and now we're getting about 3800 megs down and about 4400 megs up, which is, which is really good, but it's not the 10 gigs that I'm paying for. So I, I started scratching my head and wondering what's going on here and I found a blog post from Ookla saying how to get a 10 gig speed test 
and they were saying that web browsers have some overhead and they typically max around three gigabits a second. But they do have a desktop app that you can use that'll actually do a nice multi-threaded test and you can get the speed. So here we have the speed test CLI, which is available for Linux. There is a nice GUI app for Windows, um, but we're gonna use the CLI version here. And so I just type speed test dash S and I'm gonna specify the server ID. That way the server is the same across all tests, be it on Firefox, Brave, or in the CLI. And now we're getting a nice 9200 megabits down and about 9100 megabits up. And the latency is really low and it's amazing. There is also this request URL that you can click on and it will actually open up your speed test results in a web browser. So you can take a picture, show it off to all your friends and brag how you have the fastest internet. Um, really quick, we're gonna go over the IPMI included on this server. It's just a basic super micro IPMI, um, but it is upgraded compared to the one on the Hive Zeus that we reviewed in a previous video. This one does have a HTML5 IKVM, but other than that, it's about the same. We have all the standard stuff we'd expect to find in IPMI. We have the sensor readings. We can look at the health event log. We can also monitor the power consumption. And on average, for my use case, I'm getting about 60 to 70 watts. Um, it did peak at 250 watts for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. I think that was just a one-off event, but doesn't use that much power and it's very capable. There's a lot of other settings in here, like we can adjust the date and time, do LDAP and Active Directory settings. There's dynamic DNS, SMTP, SSL certification. Um, we can do user management in here and you can adjust the fan mode. I find that the optimal fan mode is the best and is pretty reasonable on the sound levels. Here is the HTML5 IKVM. It's pretty responsive and it does everything I expect. You can also do virtual media and a bunch of maintenance tags like firmware update, and BIOS update, stuff like that. It's a pretty typical super micro IPMI and I'm, it's just nice to see that it's on this board. To turn this into an awesome router, you will have to install a router operating system. I was using PFSense in this video and it worked great for me and I've been using it for well over a year. I know there's another project out there called OpenSense. It's actually based off the same source code. They've just split and gone their own separate ways for various reasons. We won't get into any of the bad blood about these two projects, but just choose whichever one you like the best and you'll have a fantastic router. There is another option called OpenMPTCP router. And this isn't your standard router software. It's designed to aggregate multiple WANs together into one fast connection, utilizing a VPS in the cloud. Overall, this server has been great. I've been using it as my PFSense router for over a year. And as you can see, it's very capable and handles 10 gig speeds with no problem. If you're interested in having an awesome 10 gig router, go check this out on eBay and see if it'll work for you. You can usually find it for about $230. Thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for our future videos.